see everybody out this morning. Appreciate you being here. I don't know if you can tell on Facebook Live, but our people are very lively this morning. I guess everybody's just glad to be alive and glad to get out. Amen. Amen. We got a lot to be thankful for. And uh, man, we just, we just appreciate everybody being out this morning. Does everybody have power now? Everybody's back with power. Everybody's good. All right. Well, I tell you what, we definitely have been blessed. Amen. Well, let's do this right here to start out. Let's praise the Lord three times. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, we are blessed, and we appreciate you being here today. Big day at Freedom Baptist Church. We're looking forward to a great day. We got the ordination service for the major tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, don't forget that. And then we'll be having a meet and greet at 5, so come on out and be with us. And we just appreciate you being here. Appreciate those that are on Facebook Live this morning. And uh, it's good to have Diane with us this morning. Rob and Diane are in. That's Carla's mom and dad. And always good to have them down in sunny Florida. So her, maybe they're hurricane chasers, maybe. Maybe that's what they are in another, in another life. Or come all the way from Colorado just to try to see a hurricane. But, but anyhow, good to have you all here. And then we got Keith and Danielle back there. Man, that's Dennis and Joanne's grandkids. And we appreciate them being with us this morning. What a blessing. Wow, we're glad to have everybody here this morning. So may God bless you. We'll have a little bit more to say here in a minute. So Brother Bill, come on up and lead us in the pledges. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the Christian flag, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. To our Bible, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Are you glad to be here, right? 
Well, remain standing. We're going to sing Just a Little Talk with Jesus. I think this is one of Pastor's favorite songs. All right, let's sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us about our He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by it. By now when you feel a little prayer will turn in and you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. So Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way Now let us have a little talk with Jesus Tell him all about our troubles Hear our fate is crying, he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk, Jesus makes you. Now, let me ask you all a question, let me ask you a question now. Did you learn this when like you were little, this song, and growing up, <coughs> excuse me, in the church, I'm coughing now, you got me to coughing, but, uh, but better than being in a coffin, I guess, right? But anyway. But, but, we're going to go ahead and sing this last verse, and it says this, I may have doubts and fears, my eyes may be filled with tears. I don't know about you, but I think my eyes were filled with tears the other night when we lost that power. I told Pastor, I said, you don't, you don't, you don't miss something until it's gone. And once it's gone, and boy, when it comes back on, I'm going to, I will confess something on behalf of my wife. Don't tell her I said this. But I, she turned into a shouting Baptist when that power came on the other night. Saturday, Saturday, she stood right to, oh, oh, and she said, oh, I, I didn't know you was in here, baby, okay, okay, all right, I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night, I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right, now let us he will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by Philip that's right and you you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right it makes it right amen turn around and wave at someone say hello we're going to invite pastor to come invite our kids to come up for a moment with pastor Mike Come on up. Come on down. Come on down. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Everybody all right? Well, good to have everybody out this morning. Good to see you survived. Everybody happy? Jimmy, you happy this morning? You're not happy? You don't know. Wow. <laughs> Ask me if I'm happy. I'm very happy. Good to see y'all this morning. We're going to talk about, we've been talking about the attributes of God. I'm going to give you another one. We've talked about omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, self-sufficiency. We'll give you a big one today. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Say it with me. Sovereignty. Or let's break it down and say it this way. Sovereign. Sovereign. What's it mean? What's it mean? What's it mean? Sovereign means you don't need anybody else to help you. Sovereign means you don't need anybody else to help you. What else does it mean? If you don't need anybody else to help you, what's it mean? What's sovereign? What about supreme? Do you know what supreme means? Huh? <laughs> supreme pizza. That's my granddaughter. Tell where her mind is. That's, the, that's from Diane's side of the family. <laughs> we'll, give, we'll give that one to Diane. So, that's so cute, baby. A supreme pizza. That sounds a little bit like me, really. My kind of thinking right there. 
So what does the supreme pizza mean? Mushrooms. I hope supreme means more than that. What's, what does supreme mean? If you get a supreme pizza, what does it mean? Everything is on it. So what does it mean if God is supreme and sovereign? That means God is above everything. There is no one, nothing that's bigger than God. God is supreme. What about a skyscraper? What about a skyscraper? Well, they ain't near as big as God. Nothing as big as God. Isn't that amazing? I mean, think about that. The God that we serve is sovereign. That means there's no ruler, no king, no president, no country, no nation, no government, nothing that is above God. He is supreme like a pizza. He has everything, but, but much bigger than a pizza. How big is he? How big do you want him to be? God is bigger than anything you can imagine. Amen. He is the biggest, strongest. What's well, that song go, Pastor Brooks? Champion of love. All time. Undefeated. Undisputed. Champion of love. That's our God. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys go have a great day today. We love you. We love you, my baby. My baby. Supreme Pizza. Yeah. Well, that made it good. Very good analogy. Boy, I tell you, they, they bring the electricity in the place, don't they? It's like the light bulb got turned on. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saints of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there something from my childhood and it didn't it didn't bring tears to my eyes except for when I got in trouble about it but uh, when I was in school in the fifth grade we used to take roll call every morning in school and they'd call out your name and you'd have to say I'm here and if you wasn't there you didn't say anything because you weren't there but <laughs> but my only problem was I didn't care for my fifth grade teacher yeah so I would rather go fishing and go to fifth grade. And I only missed 150 days that year fishing till I got caught. And then I had to spend summer school so I could go to the sixth grade. So I learned a very valuable lesson. Tell somebody to say here for you if you're not at school. But, but, when, you, but when we get to heaven and that book of life is open and your name's called out, I guarantee you what you're going to say, I'm here. You're going to let them know, and praise the Lord, isn't it good to know that we're here this morning praising Him. Let us labor for the Master from the dawn to set His son. Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the road is called of yonder, I'll be there. When the Yonder I'll be there. Praise him. Amen. Pastor. Pastor Brooks, I'm here just in case you're checking this morning, all right? Amen. We're going to get ready to prayer just in a minute. Let me make a couple of announcements, say a couple of things before we do. 
Well, didn't, didn't KK help us with that lesson? You know, in the eyes of a child, they, 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 they're, you know, they're reaching their minds. They're trying to connect things. So you talk about supreme. Pizza. You know, but, you know, turned into a good lesson for them there. So, you know, it's things like that that help you connect and understand because the supreme pizza ha has everything. So she's got the right concept, amen? So uh, I'll take her back and put her on my side. We appreciate that so much. All right, all right. Well, before we get started, we want to talk about uh, Bill and Shirley Marr in a good way. Happy anniversary again. Just celebrate 53 years on Friday. God bless you. And then uh, uh, Sherry and Larry Snyder celebrating 52 years on Tuesday. Boy, they're faithful on our program, aren't they? And uh, we appreciate them. Wish them happy anniversary. Miss Diane Brooks. Don't drop that mouth open at me like that. I'm not your husband. You see that look I got? Happy birthday on Friday, Miss Diane. So, we got a few more days to talk about that and, and tell you a few more times, so just get used to it. And then let me say to Pastor Paul Payne, that's Miss Diane's brother and Miss Judy out in Arkansas. I just talked, I talked to him a minute ago. I snuck outside and called him. They're celebrating their 36th year at, what is it Westside Free Will Baptist Church? 36 years. And uh, man, I, I wanted to congratulate him. So Amen. God bless him, Pastor Paul, Miss Judy. I know that's a, a great, great, great time out there today. They're having fish, by the way. So uh, you said, what are y'all having tonight? We're having pizza. Supreme? That, that, one, that one will live on. Amen? So I love that. All right. Prayer request today. Don't forget, you know, we're, we're all sitting here and we're having a good time. Most of us were inconvenienced. Yes. Now we had, Bill and Marge had some trouble, got the back of their trailer part ripped off. John and, and Pat had, to, had their whole sunroom roof torn off. But, you know, even at that, I like what they said, God's still on the throne. Amen. But think about that. Today, there are multitudes of people who are just trying to survive. Yes. They're still looking for stuff. They can't get on Sanibel Island. They don't have. They don't have anything. They're looking. I mean, we're talking about. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people. That storm hit just right in the Fort Myers area, uh, just just to cause them so much trouble. And I got to say this morning, we're so thankful because where we stay, and I was talking to Vivian about. It, that's our undisclosed location over there at Sanibel. We thought maybe the owner and the manager had been washed away because they stayed behind and nobody had heard from them. They put a message up yesterday. They made it. So uh, we certainly thank God for that. So I was, I was texting with him yesterday and, and boy, you know, getting a little hands up praying and, and, you know, but we need to pray for all the people that have been affected. Like I said, I, I, don't, know about, I don't even know if I've been inconvenienced, to be honest with you. You know, I know some of you just getting power back, and, and, you know, and been without power. And, and that's an inconvenience, like Pastor Brooks said, when you don't have it. You know, of course, he didn't, he didn't appreciate it. He went out and stayed all day and all night last night. I said, you're wasting electricity. He ought to have been home with the air conditioner turned on, enjoying that. And they're out just gallivanting around enjoying it. But, but uh, it is, it, it's, it's, it's the law of taking for granted. That we take everything for granted over a period of time. That's why we must stay diligent in our Christianity. That must be why we need a daily dose Amen. of the Word of God. That's why we need to be in church and we need to stay in the Word of God. Because if we don't, it'll be easy to just take the blessings of God for granted. And I don't want to be guilty of that. I'm sure I have in my, in my life, but I don't want to do that. I'm too close to getting out of here. But anyhow, so pray for all those people that are affected by the storm you know, not only went across the state on that angle and then went out and back up into, into the Carolinas and, and those people up there uh, suffering too. But let's pray for all those people. And, and you know, I, I asked Dave. Dave is the manager of, of Sanibel, the, the uh, campground where we stay. 
I said, what can we do? He said, I, he, he said be patient. He said, I, he said, I don't, I don't you know. They're, I'm sure they're in shock. You know, Pastor Brooks in shock but not having power. Imagine not having a house. Imagine not having your stuff. Think about what that entails, your insurance papers, what you've had put away. Memories, pictures, sentimental items, life of some of those people. Forty some, what did you say, forty some people now is a death toll? Just in Florida. Just in Florida so far. Sixty-seven, the last, I tell you what, and probably going to continue to climb because they're still, they're still not reached all these areas. where Again, I can't even imagine what they're going through. So people had to leave without their medication. Well, one of you had to just leave on the spur of the moment. If you, and, you know, I'm going to be honest, if I had been there, I'd have probably been one of the last to leave or I said, I'm going to stay and probably been washed away. We ought to learn something that you can't play with storms. And, uh, you know, think about if you had to go and leave your medication. Think about that. People got to have that every day. So, I mean, you know, there's so many things that entails housing. You come off the island, and now these people are getting ferried back and forth to get them off the island. Vehicles. Transportation. Jobs. Jobs. Food. What about all the people that worked on the island? What about all the people worked in those, in those play on in Fort Myers Beach and Port Charlotte, Sarasota, all that place that was just torn up up through there? Wow, we're blessed this morning. Amen. Amen. We ought to probably just all get up and just choo choo. Yeah. What'd it be like, Miss Diane? We ought to just take us a Baptist shouting fit. <laughs> uh, I tell you, that won't cause you to shout. I'm going to tell you what, we're, hey, just to wobble the wrong way. Instead of going that way, it would have come this way. And, and then this morning, we'd have been, we'd have been like that. We're, we're blessed. Amen. We're blessed. Pray for those people. Pray for my buddy Donnie. Pastor Donnie is over in the Ukraine. And, and I told you the other night I got to see him. They were singing Amazing Grace in Ukraine. They're Ukrainian. I don't even know what, I don't know what Ukrainian is. I don't know if it's Russian, a, 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 a piece of Russian. I don't know how, what their language is. But you could tell it was Amazing Grace. You know what I thought? They hadn't changed their music. Boy, they were happy to be there. Amen. Can you pray for Evelyn, Bill, and Shirley? Want to remember them? Kim Carrera, my buddy that we graduated with, who has just got married the other night, and just what's he facing? Lung cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreas cancer. I mean, man, that's a that's a lot to throw on you. Cooper Evans, a 12-year-old boy with health issues. Grayson, Miss Peggy Dye, who's faithful to the program. Uh, her granddaughter, Grace Grayson, has bilateral fracture in her back. Miss Ruth Crawford, pray for Ruth. Denny and, and Sharon Toby. Pam Hudson had been in the hospital again. I don't know if you knew that, Miss Glenna. Just got out, I think she told me yesterday. So pray for all these people. So many people on our prayer list. And again, I, I'm just, I just feel so blessed to be here. Amen. Uh, man, we could be in a lot of places right now or no place. All of a sudden, we've got thousands and thousands of people that are homeless. Wow. What to have a good time today and rejoice in the goodness of God. What is that? Was it D.L. Moody said, but for the grace of God, that could have been me. You know, and I'll tell you what, but for the grace of God, that could have been us. Amen. And I, I don't know. I don't have the answers to why. I don't have, I'm glad I don't have to figure that out. Amen. God's in control of every Amen. situation. Amen. Amen. Major, come and pray for us if you can this morning. Good morning, everybody. Great to see everybody out this morning. Great to have uh, my other mom here and uh, have my other parents in visiting with us. It's always a blessing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts, Lord. We just thank you for the ability to be here, dear Lord. We thank you for, for life, health, and strength, dear Lord. And we thank you for safety during the storm, Father. We just praise you for that, Lord. And it's got so much to be thankful for, dear Lord. Just want to lift up uh, all those uh, that were in the path of uh, the hurricane, dear Lord, and all those that were affected. And, and so, much, so many people lost so much, Father. Just uh, Some people lost their lives, dear Lord, lost their homes and, and everything, dear Lord. Ask that you'd be with them, dear Lord, be with the families. 
Meet with the victims of the, of the hurricane, dear Lord. Ask that you'd reach down and touch them. Lord, help them that they'd look to you through this, Father. Pray that, uh, that you'd be able to use this, Father, to get, get, get the glory and get good out of this. And people would turn to you in their time of need, Father, and realize that, that they need you and they need a Savior, Father. I ask you to pray for the service this morning, dear Lord. I ask that you be with the singing, Father, and I ask that you be with the, the preaching coming up. Be with Dad. Anoint him and his lips. Lord, pray that uh, if there be anybody here that doesn't know you, anybody that's away from you, pray that today would be the day they say yes to you, Father. Anybody that's cold or backslidden or lost, Father, whether it be here in the building or whether it be uh, watching at FBC Clo, whether it be out there with 3D Army, Father. Anybody that's away from you, pray that to, we know that the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Lord, we want to pray for our great country. Pray for America. Help her to turn her heart back to you, Father. Pray that we'd have revival. Lord, if we can't have national revival, pray that we'd have revival in our hearts, dear Lord. I ask that you'd start with me and start with my family and start with this church, dear Lord. And help us to, to, to take the gospel to a lost and dying world, dear Lord. Help us to, to change Okeechobee or wherever, wherever we're at, dear Lord, wherever our there is. Pray that you'd help that you'd use us and help us to be willing to be used by you. Help us to be humble servants and willing vessels, dear Lord. I want to pray for the, the children's service, dear Lord. Be with the mom and Roxanne over there. Pray for those kids to continue to get saved, dear Lord. And just thank you again, Lord, for our church, Lord. And we thank you for uh, the ability to be able to be here, Father, and be worshiping you, Lord. We could, could, could have, things could have been a lot different this morning, dear Lord. And, uh, but we praise you for that, Lord. We praise you for, for all your goodness and your grace and your mercy, Father. Nonetheless, we ask not our will, but your will be done. In the sweet name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people says, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for bringing to me, for bringing to me thy great salvation, so rich, so rich and free. I used to say so full and free, but now I sing it so rich and free because we have the richness of Christ in our life, and we do have his fullness. Miss Jean is going to come and sing a song right now, and I, I'm just so glad she's able to be here to do that. I was watching, I read Facebook the other night, and she said, well, the trampoline got messed up. It's always a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. It's always a trampoline. I don't know, isn't it? Let's praise the Lord for Miss Jean as she comes sing. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Don't let me get too loud on this one.
Miss Jean, I tell you what, wasn't that beautiful? I'm glad there is a place called grace. Well, I tell you what, technology is great when it works, amen? And uh, just sitting there, I was texting with my buddy, Pastor Donnie, in the Ukraine right there. Isn't that amazing? And uh, he just sent me some pictures. He's preaching through a translator over there, and the little girl's translating for him is Nina, the one that I've been following. And, got saved under his ministry, and uh, boy, they're having a great time over there, so continue to pray for them. Sherry Snyder put on the program that her little three-year-old grandson has COVID, and, and RS, what is that, what, RS, RSV, and uh, so pray for, pray for that little boy. All right, got your Bible this morning, open the book of John, chapter number 12, the book of John, chapter number 12, beginning in verse 21, just going to read, well, I might read verse 20, just to give you a little bit more background, not much, but... Really, the key thought is going to be taken out of verse number 21. Again, I hope you can be out tonight at, 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 at 6 for the ordination. I hope you can be out for the, for the meet and greet. Come on out. We might need some of y'all to help out to, tonight. So come on out. We need all the help we can get. Amen? Amen. I just thinking again this morning, we, we, we need to keep praying for workers. We need to keep praying that God will send us people because if you're going to do ministry, you've got to have people. That you you got to have people to do ministry, and uh, we need people. Amen? Amen? All right, John chapter number 12, verse number 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which uh, was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Notice what he said, sir, we would see Jesus. I'm going to use this thought this morning. I think you saw it on the screen there. Pastor Brooks had it up. Seeing Jesus in the storm. Seeing Jesus in the storm. 
I thought, man, that'd be an appropriate thing to preach on this morning. Let me just say again, just to recap for just a minute, Florida, the Fort Myers, Sanibel, Sarasota, Port Charlotte, Naples, all that area has been almost devastated with Ian. One of the worst storms to hit Florida. It'd be hard to say how many billions and billions of dollars it's done. It's left them devastated. And you know, I thought about that. I thought, you know, storms have the potential to turn your world upside down. You know, a few days ago, we, let's, go, let's go back one week ago from today. Anybody remember what I preached on last Sunday? I'll tell you. I didn't want to look. Jeremiah 8, 20. The harvest has passed. The summer has ended. And how'd it go? And we are not saved. Go back a week ago. There are thousands and thousands of people whose lives have been turned upside down. I mean, think about that. That's what storms do, amen? And I just thought, you know what the need is? I'm sure some people are angry. I'm sure some people are bitter. I'm sure some people are just flat out mad. I'm sure some people are blaming God. But you know what we need to do? We need to see Jesus Amen. in the storm. Amen? Amen? Let me ask you a question this morning. Start you out. Do you see the storm or do you see Jesus in the storm? There's a big difference. Because if all you see is the storm... You got the potential to be twisted and turned and, and, and just shaken and turned upside down and your life will be in turmoil many times. But if you can see Jesus in the storm, I didn't say that would keep you out of the storm. I didn't say that would prevent you from the storm. If you can see Jesus in the storm, amen. I thought about that song that the Hensons used to sing, remember? He can calm the troubled waters of your soul. If I could sing this morning, I'd sing that. Be rejoicing that I can't. <laughs> or better than that, be rejoicing that I don't try. I don't know what would be worse. It'd be, if I could sing, it'd be one thing, but for me to sing it and not be able to sing would be a burden. But the, Henson sang that song, He Can Calm the Troubled Waters of Your Soul. And I just thought, man, here we are this morning. We're able to come. We're able to be here. Able to be in a place. Where we still got, hey, listen, we still got a building, we've still got electricity, we still have health, we still have strength, we still have life. Most of us have most of our property left. Some have a, most of it, some got a little bit of damage. Jamie got a little bit out there on his shed, he told me. Pastor Brooks' little shed blew away, he said. But most of us are in pretty good shape this morning. Amen. And if you don't think you're in pretty good shape, Let's take the church van over to Fort Myers this morning. And let's stand outside the Crown Hotel and watch people as they come in devastated, broken, discouraged, scared, frightened, not knowing what the future's gonna hold. And I guarantee you we'd come back and I'm gonna tell you what, it'd make a dry Baptist shout to think how good God has been to us. I don't know why God spared us. I don't know why the storm went that way. I don't know, but you and I that have been spared, we need to thank God this morning, amen? I thought of that song, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. I feel, I feel a peace this morning. Amen. While the world out there is in turmoil, and the world, much of what we know over on the other side is all messed up, yeah. we can sit here this morning and have the peace of Almighty God. Amen. Three times in the Bible, Jesus used these words. I want you to think about it. Three times Jesus said, Be of good cheer. 
be of good cheer. You know what it means to be of good cheer? You know what the word cheer really meant? What it means? To have courage. To be encouraged. To have courage. Three times Jesus talked to a man who was sick of the palsy and said, be of good cheer. Be encouraged. Have courage in what you're going through. Another time Jesus said, be of good cheer, which to the disciples in the storm in Matthew 14. Be of good cheer. It's I. Be not afraid. Have courage. Even in the storm. I'm going to tell you, I shouldn't say this in, in public and on, on Facebook Live because as I said, these are things that will go viral. I was a little bit frightened of myself the other night. I'm not going to lie to you. We lay in there in the bed and about 10 o'clock and those winds come blowing through at the strongest time for about three or four hours, five hours. And you could hear that outside and it sounded like a freight train and the power, much of your power was probably already off, ours going on and off. I thought to myself, I thought, man, this is, this is frightening. And I thought, I'm a coal miner. I'm a hillbilly. I'm a country boy. But yet, I found myself frightened because I did not know what was on the other side of the wall on the outside. I didn't know what, would, I didn't know what we'd wake up to. And I didn't know it would be like John and Pat. I said, what was that? And look, and the roof is blown off. Life can change very, Amen. very quickly. But I got to tell you something. There's also another part of you that rejoices knowing that no matter what happens, you're at peace with Almighty God. And you know that you've been saved. And, and you lay, you know, it's, I don't know if it's like waiting to go to surgery, waiting to go to jail, waiting to go. I don't know what it's like, but you lay and you say, I don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. And you can have a. Listen, we're human. We're human. You can have some fear at times. But I'm going to tell you, it's great to have enough faith to say, no matter what happens, I'm all right. And then Jesus said one more time to a group of disciples who were scared of persecution, be of good cheer. Wow. Can I say to you this morning, maybe my message should have been, be of good cheer. Not good cheer, not, not, just, not just laughing and being frivolous and just, oh, look at it. No, but to be encouraged, to have courage because your name is written down in the Lamb's Amen. Book of Life. Amen. Because I want to tell you something. Listen, remember when Jesus sent the boys out? He sent them out, and they, man, they were doing all kind of miracles. And they come back and they said, hey, hey, Jesus, you're not going to believe it. We did this, we did this, we did this. Man, hey, look, we're doing everything. And Jesus said, I'll tell you what you ought to rejoice in. He said, rejoice that your names have been written down in the Lamb's book of life. I want to tell you this morning, listen, if you're saved and your name is written down in heaven, you've got reason to be of good cheer. You've got reason to take heart. You've got reason to be encouraged. You've got reason to have courage, even in, even in sickness. Even in the storm, even, even when you're saddened and scared, you can still have courage in Jesus. Amen. Man, listen, I'm going to tell you something. In this world, listen, in this world, we can have that in Jesus. Storms, sicknesses, heartaches, troubles, persecutions, doubts, diseases, discouragements, even death is going to come. You can't get out unless Jesus comes back. Which we'll just stop right there and we'll jump up on our feet and say, even so, even so come quickly, Amen. Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, take courage. You know why you can take courage? Because Jesus is right there Amen. with Amen. you. I don't know about you, but I thought, man, the world really needs to hear that today. Sanibel needs to hear that. Fort Myers needs to hear that. Naples needs to hear that. Port Charlotte needs to hear that. 
all those areas, and as it went through and come out into the Carolina, the, the world out there is questioning and wondering why they need to say, here, be of good cheer. Be a good cheer. And if you say that to somebody, they probably slap you. But have you experienced that? The peace of God in the midst of the storm? It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, you got, you, we're human. But I tell you what, that spiritual side can override and give you the peace that only God can give. Amen. Oh, how we need to see Jesus today. And I'm going to tell you a great way to see him. Listen, you see Jesus in a lot of places and a lot of things. I'll tell you one of the easiest places to see Jesus is in the storm. In the storm will cause you to realize. You know what the storm will do? Listen, sadly, Satan has people blinded, and they can't see Jesus. But if you that are saved, man, look for Jesus everywhere you go. Look for Jesus in everything. He may, sh I'm not talking about his physical body, but I'll tell you what, he can make, make you know that he is there beyond any shadow of a doubt. Amen? And I'm going to tell you what, when you, get, when you get like that, there is nothing that can fill your longing soul, your thirsty soul, like the presence of Jesus. Amen. You remember? You remember? Listen, I, hey, I've been preaching a long time, but I know what it was like on the other side. I ain't never forgotten what it was like on the other side. Amen. You say, I have. Well, if you have, you need to go back and remember Amen. what it was like on that side. As I read through Exodus, this, uh, again, reading, man, I'm telling you, what a blessing. I'm getting such a blessing reading through Exodus and watching God move and direct and move things, the providence of God. Amen. And how many times, I thought, do you know how many times in Exodus, the chapter starts out, and God said, 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 and God said. wow. Think about that. The providence, the sovereignty, Amen. Amen. the supreme being of our almighty God. Yes. And I think, but you know, as I was reading through that, I, I thought we are so much like the children of Israel. They made a statement I never had picked up on until this week. Major, Pastor Brooks, after they had been delivered out of Egypt, and they were, Pharaoh said, they're entangled in the wilderness. Let's go get them and bring them back. And they began to complain to Moses, and they said there weren't any graves in Egypt. Is that a true statement? They'd been down there 400 years, but yet they said there are no graves. We would, we would rather go back to Egypt than to die in the wilderness. I'm just asking a question. Pastor Brooks making a note on that. Are there no graves in Egypt? <laughs> I got to tell you, I got, there are probably thousands of graves in Egypt. They're just forgotten. Can I tell you something this morning? Hey, I've signed the book. I'm signed. I'm blood bought. I'm stamped with the blood of Jesus. I've got full assurance. Hey, Kevin Arnold, I'm going to tell you something right here. I've been in the battle a long time. I ain't going back to Egypt. I would I'm going to change it around, Pastor Brooks. I would rather die in the wilderness than to go back and serve Satan. I would rather, hey, listen, if I starve to death, if I just wish wither away, and you can tell, I ain't even close to that. I got a long way to go for that. Listen. I ain't going back to Satan. I ain't going back to Egypt. I just soon die. Hey, I would rather die with the Lord no matter where you are. But Christians, you know what? I tell you what Christians do. First time they hit a bump in the road. First time they run into any resistance. First time they have any opposition. First time they have any obstacles. First time anything goes wrong. You know what they say? I'm going back to Egypt. Can I ask you a question this morning? Maybe you can't remember. Maybe you never even got saved. Can you remember what it was like to be unsaved? 
Can you remember what it's like to know that if you was to die and meet Jesus, you would meet him in a lost condition, that you would die and bust tail wide open, and you would be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I thank God I've never forgotten that. And I can tell you what, listen, listen, hey, listen, hey, listen. (laughs) Those folks may be in the desert. They may be in the wilderness over there. We might be in the wilderness. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I've already signed up, Pastor Brooks. I'm going to die in the wilderness if that's what it takes instead of going back into Egypt. I ain't going back and serve Satan. I wouldn't give, I would not give him the satisfaction of sin. I told you. You know what most people say when you get saved? They used to say this. I don't know. I don't know people get saved enough now to even hear this. But they used to say, somebody gets saved and they say, we give him a couple weeks. Remember when they used to say that? I don't even know if they say it anymore. So many people not even say it. They used to get saved, man. They say, well, give them a couple weeks. They'll be back. What they're saying is they'll never last. I'm going to tell you what. Hey, Kevin, I'm going to last. I don't know, listen, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what the world's going to do. I don't know what they're going to do over yonder in Sanibel. I don't know what they're going to do on the West Coast. I don't know what the world's going to do, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I have already, listen, I'm going to fly the banner high. I'm going to hold up the bloodstained banner, and I'm going on with Jesus. It doesn't matter. Hey, listen, come hell or high water, I'm going on with Jesus. Jesus. I'm not going back. The devil can leave. listen. You, all the hounds of hell can get after you. I ain't going back. All the demons can get after you. I ain't going back. And I'm going to talk about that tonight to the major when I address him tonight. Satan will unloose all the hounds of hell on that man right there, right now. Because of the decision he made. Because of the calling he accepted. But I'm going to tell you something. You ain't far behind. Satan will unloose everything in hell. Every demon. Everything he can to get you to say, oh no. I'm going back to Egypt. I'm going to tell you what. Listen. I've (laughs) I've tasted enough of the honey. Man, listen, I have drunk from the waters of life. I know what it's like to have Jesus in the midst of the storm. I've been with him up on the mountain. I've been with him down in the valley. I've been with him on everyday basis. And I can tell you what, I am not going back. And the problem is, we get saved like we get married and like we get cars and like we change underwear. That if it doesn't work out, I'm going back. That's not the attitude to have. The attitude to have is look Satan right square dead in the eyeballs and say, I ain't going back. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have storm. You're going to have heartache. You're going to have disappointment. You're going to have things that go wrong. You're going to have people that don't like you. You're going to have people that persecute you. And again, as I'm reading through the New Testament, the life of the Apostle Paul, these TV preachers have never read that part of the Bible. Beaten, whipped, chained, scourged, left for dead, shipwrecked. Well, you just get saved and give your life to Jesus. You'll never have a problem. I guarantee you that wouldn't, that wouldn't preach over on the coast this morning. I tell you what would preach though, sirs, we would see Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't want. You don't want to hear this. You never more. And I, I have trouble with this word. So you might have to help me out. You're never more vulnerable. Right. Not you right with it. If I think about it, I can't say it for anything. If I just spit it out, it'll go. But if I study on it, it won't come out. You're never more vulnerable. <coughs> You're never more vulnerable. Never more vulnerable. 
than when you're in the storm. I tell you what the storm will do. Go over there and stand a couple of days ago. I went out at 4.30 in the morning and the wind was still howling. And there was debris all over the yard. It looked like a war zone had come through there. And you know what I thought? I'm going back in the house. I'm going to stand out here in the dark and a tree limb come down and kill me. The epitome of stupidity. Go over there. Go over there and stand out on the pier and stand there and tell Ian. I'm not going to move. You're not going to touch me. Let Kenneth Copeland get out there and rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Foot. Hogwash. And a bunch of other stuff. I tell you, I'll tell you when you're the most vulnerable. It's when you're in the storm. And you realize. See, this is what I've been listening to the Sanibel City Hall meetings. Every day at 6.30, Miss Vivian, every, if you get on there and find it, every day at 6.30 they're updating. And that's an affluent society over there. That's high dollar district over there. And as you sit and listen to those people, when you're in the storm, your position, your possessions, your pride, your money means absolutely nothing. And you find yourself, this is how most, <laughs> this is how most people come to Jesus Amen. is in the storm. Yes. Broken, beaten, bruised, battered, and not knowing anywhere or anyone else to do or go to. And Jesus stands and says, come unto me. All ye that are broken, all ye that are tired, all ye that are weary, all ye that things have gone wrong, all ye in the storm, come unto me, all ye that are weary. And I will give you rest. People say, I'm not I'm not, I'm not going to come to Jesus like that. That's the way most people come. After your pride and your possessions and, and your, your, your property and the positions that you hold, after all those things have been taken away and you say, those aren't worth a hill of beans. Then you say, I need something more lasting and secure. I wonder what it is. And Jesus has been there all along. Wow. I'm going to give you three points I was going to preach on this morning, but I'm not because time's about up. But I'm going to give them. I'm going to go ahead and give, I'm going to give you three points. If you take points, write these down. Number one, the power of the storm. If you read in Matthew and Mark the accounts of Jesus and the storm, there are a lot of storms in, in, the, in the Bible. You say, I wonder why. You, and somebody said, Preacher, you preach a lot on storms. I, well, I wonder why. Yeah. There sure are a lot of them. Jesus told the story, man, one, one of the storms, he, went, he put the boys in the ship and went up on the mountain to pray and sent them to the other side, and they got in the storm. One of the storms in Mark that I just preached about a couple Wednesdays ago, he got in the ship with them and went to the other side and was asleep, and the storm was on, the, on, the, on them out there. But in all of those, you look at the power of the storm. We're talking about professional boatmen. Sailors, if we would. Fishermen, if we would. People that are not amateurs. People are not just out there just, just out there for a little stroll. I'm talking about people whose lives depended on the water and on the ship. And you know what they did? They panicked. They toiled. They rowed. They did everything they can. And the wind was still contrary to them. The storms are powerful. Amen. And you say, I've never, I've never really been in one. Then you need to, you need to be choo-chooing. <laughs> Don't let me choo-choo by my side. I get Diane, we'll choo-choo. <laughs> I'll grab her by the hand and make her choo-choo with me. And we'll go by and get Miss Gwen, get a lizard or something. And get, we'll get them all choo-chooing. <laughs> but hey, I'm going to tell you something. Listen. 
Storms are powerful. Amen. Amen. You maybe you maybe you, you you know maybe you just haven't seen one yet. Maybe you say I've heard about them. There's a storm out there that's so powerful. It's going to take you out. Amen. I remember several years ago when we first came to Florida, and Rick Scott was the governor, and he liked to scare the bejeebies out of us. And I can't remember what hurricane it was that was coming. He got on and he said, you will die. You remember that? Anybody remember that? Man, that stuck in my mind. You will die. And Kathy and I just looking at each other. Man, we don't, we, don't, we don't have hurricanes in West Virginia. Rick Scott on the government said, get out or you will die. Can I tell you, I'm going to be like Rick Scott. There's a storm out there that is so powerful, you will die. If Jesus doesn't come back, you will die. I don't know if it'll be, I don't know what it'll be. It might be disease. It might be an accident. It might be a natural death. But there is a storm out there that is so powerful, it's going to take you out. And you know what most people do when I tell them that? Sure. Look at me. I'm tough. I'm strong. I've got money. You don't know who you're talking to. I'm going to say it again. For everybody on Facebook or in the world that might be watching, there's a storm out there that's so powerful, it's going to take you out. Amen. Then number two, there's a panic in the storm. I listened, to the, I listened to them on that city hall meeting of Sanibel talking about people that they are rescuing off that island. Remember the bridge has collapsed. The causeway, five places, it has already collapsed. It may all be gone before it's said and done. And some of the people that they're rescuing are so happy to see somebody. Can you imagine riding out a storm like that? Lose your power. Lose your water. Lose everything you've got. After, hey, listen, you're back, listen, all this green talk, your batteries will go dead after a while. And somebody told them when they finally come up to rescue them, said, we didn't think anybody was coming. In Charlie, we heard the sounds of the saws and we knew help was on the way. Said, we haven't heard anything. I bet it's not hard to get those people off the island. I bet it's not hard to throw the life ring out to them and say, hey, we'll take you out of here. And then for those who didn't come off yet, the man said, give them a couple weeks with no water, with no electricity, with no sewage. They'd be ready to come on. I can't imagine those boys panicking on the ship with Jesus. And Jesus on the mountain watching them. But man, listen, the storms can get so bad, it can cause even the best people to panic. So you've got the power of the storm. You've got the panic in the storm. I'm going to close with this. The only reason I'm giving you my points is because I want to get down to this. The presence in the storm. Jesus said, walking on the water. They're out there, hey, they're out there struggling. They're out there rowing. They're out there toiling. They're out there not knowing if they're going to get back to land. And Jesus is just out there walking on the water. And they looked at him and they, and they, were, they were frightened. They'd never seen Jesus walk on the water. And Jesus said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Did you watch the news the other day, the storm? You know where the safest place to be in a hurricane is? Thousands of miles away, apparently. But you know where the other safe place to be? Is in the eye of the storm. And that eye wall is moving. And they say you can look up and see the blue sky. And you can see the sun shining. And it's calm. In the eye of the storm. 
Jesus said, boys, it is I. I. Be of good cheer. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, when you get in the storm, I tell you we need to be, you need to get in the eye Amen. of the storm. I ain't talking about this eye. I'm talking about that eye. Amen. And you need to get with Jesus. But I'm going to tell you what, if you can get a hold of Jesus, you can ride out your storm. And he can calm the troubled waters of your soul. Amen. Amen. I'm glad, I'm glad, Pastor Brooks, that years ago I found the eye of the storm. I didn't even know about the eye of the storm years ago. I didn't know anything about the eye of the storm yonder in the hills and hollers. I knew nothing about all that. You hear about that, it doesn't mean anything to you. And you get down here in Hurricane Central and you learn about, man, oh man, there is calm. There is peace. There is sunshine in the eye of the storm. Amen. And Jesus said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Amen. I want to say to you this morning in closing that I hope that you can see Jesus Amen. in the storm. Amen. And if you haven't seen him yet, I don't know what it's going to take. What kind of storm will it take for you to see Jesus? It's frightening. It's frightening. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I don't want any more wind than we had the other night. That, that was enough for me. I can't imagine being over there. That was a plenty for me. Let me ask you, spiritually speaking, what is it going to take for you to see the eye of the storm. Amen. Jesus is watching. He's there. You know, one account said Jesus would have gone on by. He was just, he was making himself available. And he was out there just walking along. And when they saw him, they called out to Jesus. You know what? Jesus is near unto every Amen. one of us. Nearer than what we even imagine. Yes. Amen. And boy, I tell you what, all you gotta do is just call on Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Remember that old song? Jesus. 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 There's just something. Amen. Ooh, that'll make that that'll make you get happy right there. I remember a lady one time we were leading her to the Lord and we were sitting around that table and we were praying, old hands praying, me and another guy and her husband and, and she was sitting there and she wanted to be saved and she was sitting there and, and, all, and she didn't say anything. And I looked at her and she just sitting there crying and the tears running down her and just shouting, you know, one of, those, one of those old ugly cries. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I don't know how to pray. I said, just call on Jesus. She said, Jesus, Jesus. And she got saved and become one of the best friends, one of the most loyal supporters they ever had in the ministry. And man, what a blessing she was. She said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Listen, call on Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's one of my favorite scriptures that I like to read from time to time is Revelation 21.1 where it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And then it says, And there was no more sea. And that was written for the fishermen. It was written because they wouldn't have to toil anymore. They wouldn't have to worry about how they ever going to make it because they won't have to worry about the fishing anymore. And something else, they wouldn't have to worry about the storm. Do you have the cheer that Jesus offers you today? Do you have the courage to live?
Let's stand together. We're going to sing. You come this morning. God's touched your heart today. You should come up and just lay it on the line for Jesus. If you're on the internet, for you the same. Right where you are. Jesus will take you just as you are. Right where you are. And you give your heart to Jesus this morning. As we sing, you come. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I shouldn't have been out there standing looking at the wind and everything all I could think was Lord I need you you might be in a position today maybe you didn't come up this morning maybe you're at your house you said boy I should have prayed right now but you find out later today that you need Jesus do us do us this just do this give us a call one of us will get in touch with you Get on our Facebook page and say, I need to talk to someone, and we will get in touch with you. You call us from your house. One of us pastors will come and talk to you. If we can't, we'll find somebody that will. But it would be the boy, I'm glad you said that. It would be the best decision that you will never regret making. Amen. Uh, Come on up, Major, and close us out. Don't forget this evening. Now, I put it on a slide, 530 for the meet and greet, but it's 5 o'clock. Be come at 5 o'clock for meet and greet. We're going to have pizza. We're going to have, what else are you going to buy us? I don't know. But, uh, okay. But, uh, okay. But uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd add that. But anyway. And, uh, yeah, but, but come at 5, meet the family. You know, this is going to be a, such a special time. And uh, you would really regret not being here tonight, I think. If you, especially if you've never seen an ordination service, you come tonight. And we're going to have it on Facebook also, so you be watching tonight. Not you, you're going to be here. But those that are, those need to watch, they can watch on Facebook. All right, well, God bless you today. Hey, we had a good day in the Lord so far. Amen. He's gonna, it's going to get better and better, or gooder and gooder as we go along. Close this out, buddy. Amen. I'm in a great place to be, Amen. amen. Hope we can see everybody out uh, tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come today, Lord. We thank you for the service that we've had, dear Lord. And just as the song sings, dear Lord, uh, we need you, Lord. We need you every hour, Father. We thank you, Lord, for always being there for us, Father. Help us to reach out to you, Father, and call upon the name of Jesus, dear Lord. And as, uh, as Dad preached today, dear Lord, help us to see you in the storm, Father. We know storms are going to come, Father. And, but, but as long as we got you, Father, we're going to be all right, dear Lord. As long as we hang on to Jesus, dear Lord, and stay close to you, Father, we just thank you and praise you, Father. 
for all the goodness and mercy that you've bestowed upon us, dear Lord. Help us now as we go out today, Lord. Keep us safe and get us all home safely and bring us all back tonight safely, dear Lord. And pray for the service tonight, Lord. And pray that uh, uh, either today or tonight, dear Lord, uh, anybody that uh, heard the gospel, Lord, anybody that heard the message that doesn't know you or that's lost, dear Lord, pray for old-time conviction, Lord, Holy Spirit conviction, Father, upon them that they uh, wouldn't be able to eat or sleep until they dropped to their knees and acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of their life, dear Lord. Lord, again, we praise you and thank you for all you've done for us, dear Lord. Forgive us where we failed, dear Father. Nonetheless, we ask not my will, but that your will be done. In the sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Oh.